China, one of the biggest cities you might not know of. It's home to 15 million people, was a host city for the 2008 Summer Olympics, and is the neighboring city to the capital, Beijing. Just like America, cash is used commonly for goods and services. However, unlike America, the credit and debit cards are put away in their wallets and instead something else is used. A smartphone. That's right. One bank account, one app, and one smartphone, and you can do anything you want here. Pay your electrical bill, buy movie tickets, and buy a new shirt. All can be done on a smartphone. How is that possible? Stay tuned as I talk about how mobile payments work in China. One area where China is way ahead of the game is with mobile payments. In America, it's usually credit and debit cards, cash, then mobile payments. In China, especially in more developed cities, it's mobile payments, then cash, with credit and debit cards being a rarity. For the most part, people use mobile payments to buy just about anything. For example, you can use your phone, scan a QR code, and rent a bike to ride in a supermarket, and use your phone there to pay for groceries. Now, there are multiple ways the mobile payments work. The most common way is through their social media apps like WeChat. Think of it like an iMessage slash Facebook hybrid. In WeChat, there is WeChat Pay, like Apple Pay. Once you set it up with a card as a backup for payments, there is a barcode you can scan to pay for stuff. People can send each other money to use for WeChat Pay as well, something Apple recently added in Apple Pay. Now, when using WeChat Pay, there is usually two methods. The first is the easiest way, which is to open up the barcode and the cashier scans it. Once it is scanned, the cashier and you both receive a notification that it went through and you receive a message of how much it was. The other way is to scan a QR code by the register that will open to the WeChat account of the store. You put in the total amount and again both you and the cashier will receive a notification that it went through. Now you're good to go. Now the reason I gave an example about mobile payments earlier is to make a point that it can be used literally anywhere. Supermarkets, fast food, retail stores, even street vendors like the ones you see in New York City have a QR code for WeChat Pay for you to use. WeChat Pay is not the only one that there is in China. Another big one, even bigger than WeChat, is Alipay, made by Alibaba. And as distant third, Apple Pay is also starting to grow a foothold here as well. If you're ever in China, a good way to tell who accepts what mobile payments is to check the stickers. Most stores will have stickers by the entrance telling you what mobile payments they will accept. Now that you know how the system works over in China, let me take you back to how they got there. According to IT consultants, there are a few reasons for this. The first being the issue of trust in China. In the early to mid-2000s, not a lot of people had credit cards in China, and if they did, they understandably would be hesitant about giving out their credit card numbers over the phone for an order. It was due to this that online payments were slow to take off. This is where one of the bigger factors in payments came in. Alibaba, led by founder Jack Ma. In late 2003, they made Alipay, a service where online payments would be secure for both the customers and sellers. As Jack Ma said, quote, When we created Alipay in 2003, we did it to resolve the issue of trust between people. And by resolving the issue of trust, we've also resolved the issue of payment." End quote. The next reason mobile payments exploded was that it was the bigger companies in China that pushed it. This was not just a bunch of startups that got lucky. These companies are huge in China, with a huge consumer base. For Alibaba, they had Alipay, and that was the preferred payment system for the top e-commerce sites in China, such as Taobao, also owned by Alibaba. So in the mid to late 2000s, as more and more people in China were getting online, that just grew the size of users for Alipay. When mobile payments would happen in a few years, Alibaba was already set as they had millions of users. For Apple, when they brought over Apple Pay in 2016, they are one of the biggest companies in the world, yet they were really behind in China on mobile payments, so they had to launch it with a huge marketing campaign, something they did not have to do in the United States as mobile payments were in its infancy. Everything I just explained was the bedrock of what would become the boom of mobile payments. Now moving into early to mid 2010s, two more direct factors would come together to create what China is seeing now. Over the past few decades, more and more of China became modernized, and with that, more and more people were becoming part of the middle class, and that meant they had more money to spend. This combined with the rise in popularity of smartphones and smartphone makers started to make more affordable phones, causing sales to skyrocket. From Coresight research, by the end of 2015, there were 620 mobile internet users in China, which also happened to make up 90% of all the internet users in the country. China turned into a developing country where the smartphone became an extension of themselves, more so than other countries like America. The market obviously then responded and soon companies worked it to make it easier for the customers to pay using just their phone. Now living in China, you can pay for just about everything from your phone, such as food, movie tickets, water bills, 
phone bills, and renting bikes, just to name a few. So that is the history on how mobile payments came to dominate China. But I wanted to explain how it is different from America. If there is one word I could use to differentiate the markets, it would be fragmentation. In China's situation, it was a mix of quick economic changes and the fact that once mobile payments started to get big, companies worked to be able to accept payments through the services like Alibaba and WeChat provided. In America, in America, we have had a system of cash, checks, and credit cards for decades, and that is a cycle that is hard to break. Not only that, but you have banks that are slow to a changing economy and companies that have decided to each have their own version of mobile payments. Big ones like McDonald's, Starbucks, and Dunkin' Donuts each have their own mobile payment system, usually a barcode to scan versus a QR code in China, and some type of reward system. These are designed to get you to keep using the app to buy stuff, keeping you in their own system. Now, yes, some companies do allow multiple mobile payment options like McDonald's. For example, you can use either their app or say Apple Pay or Samsung Pay. However, other companies refuse to actually change and allow multiple mo mobile payment options. An example here is Target. For years now, Target has refused to accept Apple Pay and recently just started their own mobile payment system. Another barcode system in their app, but still no Apple Pay. This is why for, at least in America, Samsung Pay is the way to go as it is built to actually work across America because it is able to work with credit card machines that don't even have an NFC reader built in. And I guess for smaller companies, that is one of the main reasons for their hesitant to adopt mobile payments is the cost of upgrading hardware to accept those payments. So for the past few years now, China has been at the top of its game with mobile payments, while America has been playing catch up. But now with the rise of Chinese middle and upper class, more and more Chinese tourists are traveling the world, and this is causing issues with companies. Since a lot of Chinese citizens are used to mobile payments and maybe some cash, they are shocked to learn their mobile payments might be useless to them, depending on where they go. To solve this growing problem, companies are now starting to work with Alibaba and WeChat to offer mobile payment services to their Chinese customers. From a Forbes article from 2017, it talked about some of the deals that companies were doing in order to help better serve Chinese tourists. Quote, Alipay has already signed global agreements with Marriott and Uber. Alipay will be rolling out a partnership with Yelp in New York, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and San Francisco. WeChat Pay has also signed a Las Vegas deal with Caesars. End quote. Over the next few years, you can expect this to happen more and more, and if you currently live in a major city such as New York City and Los Angeles, you might already have them. Just like out for these stickers, if a store has them, that means they accept it. So in conclusion, I wanted to make this documentary because I was, I was visiting in China with my girlfriend. I became amazed at how pervasive mobile payments were in day-to-day -day life. As someone who has had a deep passion for technology, I was just amazed about it and I wanted to talk about it, but I wanted to do it right. I felt this was a topic that I could have done more detail on and not just be a 2-3 minute video on YouTube or a segment on my What Happened podcast. No, I wanted to expand on it and so this was the end result. I hope that by watching this, you learned something new, and maybe you became more interested in it as a result. Thank you for watching.